Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diachronic Heroes here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be taking a look at the Destiny 2 weekly reset for June 29th, 2021. So everything that has reset through the week, the regular weekly resets, as well as the special stuff going on. Which of the special stuff? Right now we have the Splicer 8 quest, as you well know, and we also have Iron Banner plus increased Valor, if you want Valor for any reason. And again, Splicer 8, you just go to the Splicer Servitor and he'll send you on some quests and, um, yeah. Moving on, let's go ahead and get started with the regular weekly reset. Starting up with the Nightfall this week, the Nightfall is going to be the Insight Terminus. So that's going to be the big scion at the end of the Nessus mission. And since last week was a fusion rifle, I believe the scout rifle is this week, which is the Hung Jury 180 RPM scout rifle. Probably a good choice if you like scout rifles. When it comes to getting 100k, Legend seems like the best option. And I know you guys definitely really liked the Grandmaster Nightfall last week. Glassway, I still consider to be the number one hardest Grandmaster in the game. Some people think it's proving grounds, but there's certain special strategies. But Glassway is just so much Hydra. So this week is going to be a lot easier. The Vanguard Strike playlist burn is going to be Void Singe. The Rotating Crucible playlist is going to be Mayhem, and I love Mayhem. Lots of supers, grenades, heavies. If you need any of that special stuff for a certain quest, it is one of the best ways to do it. And of course, Iron Banner. 6v6 level advantages are enabled, heavy ammo is shared, it's control, and keep in mind that level advantages only really count your armor and not the artifact. Real quick, just wanted to show off the available bounties this week because every single one of the events has four of seven different bounties and that does change how you play Iron Banner for that event. First one is going to be getting kills while holding the zone advantage. Next one is matches and wins. After that, we have the ability kills and super against opponents. This one is usually the one you don't want. And then final blows and then bonus with energy and power weapons. And of course, make sure you're picking up your quest because you get a bunch of extra rewards for it and it unlocks some stuff, but it no longer gates your ability to actually get these engrams, which you can get just directly from them if you have uh, lots of tokens. And keep in mind that all of these token engram stuff, if you're going to get armor with it, it's actually going to be quite a high stat roll. You can see here 63 is a pretty high stat roll. So if you want really high stat armor, the Iron Banner tokens and just playing Iron Banner is a great way to do it it's not just the pinnacle uh, rewards here you get a lot of high stat stuff moving on to the Europa stuff first up for the Empire hunt we have the technocrat probably the hardest of all of the different Empire hunts can somebody tell me why my si simulation isn't here I have the full upgrades from Varix. my my warlock has done all of the stuff why where is it so I'm gonna go ahead and take a guess based on what I remember. I believe last week was the inside-outside one with the cubes, and I believe this week is gonna be the defend the area. If it's not, it's gonna be the run through the cold. For the Deepstone Crypt Raid Challenge, we have Red Rover taking place in the first encounter of the raid. Basically, every person has to do the operator job and shoot one of the panels down below before the end of the encounter. Moving on to the moon stuff. For the Nightmare Hunts, we have things like the Fanatic, we have Crota, and we have Fogop. Fogop, obviously being the easiest. And if you're looking for headpieces, the uh, Legend Lost Sector's on head right now. For the Garden of Salvation Raid Challenge, we have to the top. This is going to be taking place in the third major encounter, the encounter you actually kill the Harpy boss. And in this encounter, anytime you dunk moats, it has to be 10 moats at a time. So instead of the 5, 10, 10, 5, you have to do 10, 10, 10. The strategy here, just send someone early. As soon as you get that first link to start the encounter, that person has the buff. Moving on, let's go ahead and take a look at the different seasonal challenges. I actually forgot to claim that from last week. The seasonal challenges this week are retroactive if you have a lot of uh, progress. Apparently, I'm not doing enough Conflex chests, but again, this kind of just continues every single week. Just a little bit of a summary of what is available today. First up, we obviously have the Splicer 8 quest and doing all the Corrupted chests. That's 20 Corrupted chests, my god. We also have completing any override mission in 15 minutes or less, which I already have. Doing the unlocked chest stuff, just like last week, just a little bit more. Defeating powerful Vex, no longer is it a specific weapon type like we usually have in this slot. Getting the No Composure Gambit ornament. Winning multiple rounds of trials, which actually gives you a trials weapon and eight times large XP. And finally, Vanguard Vestments, which I assume is getting all of the ornaments for the Null Composure, which gives you United Front. I assume that's another ornament that is all three of them. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at Banshee's inventory to see if there's any good rolls. So I went ahead and took a look at all of the different rolls, and honestly, they all kind of suck. Firstly, we have the Seven Seraph Revolver, can do Warmind Cells, but Underdog Osmosis is really not that good, doesn't have other great perks. You have another one, Long Shadow, Firmly Planted, Ambitious, not a great combination. Firmly Planted is okay, you know, it's actually definitely underrated, but not the most amazing stats or sights. Slide Shot Auto Loading, even though it has a bunch of range options, no full 
Fold Choke. Doesn't really have a synergy in either PvP or PvE. We have True Teller with Field Prep Quick Draw, but it doesn't have Spike Grenades or Blinding Grenades on it. And then we have Bad Omen, Snapshot Quick Draw, not really what you want. And finally, Tarantula, probably actually the best version relative to other versions it can have is going to be the Tarantula, because it has Box Breathing. But again, the rest of it is just kind of crap, so it, pretty bad week. Which I guess is good in some ways, that means that, you know, people aren't getting the most ridiculous rolls out of the gunsmith right away. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at Eververse's store, showing off the different Bright Dust purchases. I do like these, they're all very shiny. First up, for the Ghost option today, we have the Firebreak Shelf, this is something you're interested. We have the Ornament for the Ariana's Vow, this is not the one that I use, the one that looks like it has a, a black with fire on it, which is pretty nice. A ghost Projection, if that's something you like, and then of course the Boreal Char, which I don't really know where to use it, but the weapons seem to color differently. Moving on to the other Bright Dust section, ooh, yeah. First up on the first thing, we have the dubious correlations, where you're basically, uh, not a mad scientist, but a, a conspiracy theorist, and you're like, there's red lines, can't you see what's going on, blah blah blah, it's from that one show, I forget the name of it. You also have this, uh, sparrow, if you want to have spinny things on your sparrow, it's a medical transport. We have this ship, if that's something you're interested, it actually looks more like a sparrow, to be honest with you. We have the arm ornament for whatever class you're currently on, I'm on my warlock, so I do see the warlock one, and I believe this is going to be the Eververse armor, which is going to be... Uh, this set right here, obviously I'm on my Warlock, so I see the Warlock one. Also have the fancy footwork emote, which is a multiplayer emote where you just kind of tap in ankles with somebody else. We have the ornament for the Wither Horde, which obviously looks wonderful. Got some ghost projections, you got some transmit effects, they're all pretty straightforward. Everything is ex exactly as you'd expect it. More Boreal Char, unfortunately. Welded Brass, looks like this. Don't really know when I want to use this. Reef Made can look pretty good on certain armors and certain weapons if you want a little tinge of purple on it and then finally uh Car cargulo bristol oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. i mean when your cat plops down next to your chair you, you gotta you gotta stop and and, and and pet the fluffer you know what i'm saying it's like a de-stressing moment just pet the cat <laughs> And finally, we have Hawthorne's Inventory. For the weekly raid challenge for the last Wish Raid, we have Witch Witch. Taking place in the second encounter during Shiro Chi. You can actually see it says Shiro Chi on it. And this one's going to be the annoying one. Because all you have to do is just avoid her regular ball attack. You can be pushed and jumped, just not hit by the regular ball attack that has weird AoE. You know what I'm just realizing? These rocks that are on the ground that look so real. If you kind of move around and look at them from like a flat angle, you realize it's just like a PNG, and now I can't unsee it. And of course, make sure you come check out my live streams that I have right after these videos, as well as the times on screen right now. Twitch.tv slash Dichronic, link in the description down below. Oftentimes doing open lobbies, even for Vaults of Glass. If you've never done it, come join us. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, a big thank you to Medibudu, Mom, Dad, Dr. Strange, Joe Smith, Monday, Steve Bachmanis, Raymond Shonen, Yuta Panther, Cole Sherman, Casey Reagan, for their support on Patreon. And that's it. My name is Dichronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.